So as a way of, uh, I guess, introducing the session, um, as I said, my name is uh, Robin Mellon, I'm New South Wales Programme Advisor. Uh, we also have on the line Ed Cotter, who's the Executive Manager at Better Building Finance. Uh, he'll be speaking later about particular initiatives. And also online, we have Lizette Moratori, who is the Marketing Manager at uh, Better Building Finance. Lizette is going to be doing uh, some lightning sketches uh, of the topics we're covering and the speakers and the projects uh, so that we have an amazing visual representation of what's going on today that we can share with you afterwards. Just to run through uh, the format uh, for today's webinar focusing on, on food loss and waste reduction, um, I'll be speaking first just to provide uh, a few minutes of context uh, and a broad overview about the issue of food loss and waste. Uh, I'm delighted then to welcome uh, Susie Brain from Titanium Food, who's going to be covering some of the sort of the strategic issues around different types of property and what they're seeing around their clients. We then have Chris Fitzpatrick from the City of Sydney, who will be talking to us about the Sustainable Destination Partnership, the work that they're doing uh, with many of their local businesses and uh, building owners um, and some of their case studies. We've got David Pinker from Green Eco Technologies, who's going to be talking about the Waste Master uh, Initiative and also some of their amazing case studies here in Australia. And I'm delighted to welcome Raquel Said from Nutri-V uh, in Victoria, who's going to be talking about their wonderful new initiative, uh, looking at rehydrating, sorry, dehydrating food to ensure that we can reduce uh, food loss. So we've got people essentially uh, at, at different ends of the whole food supply chain uh, able to give their perspectives. And then uh, last but not least, we'll have Ed Cotter uh, from Better Building Finance. We'll be talking about some of the finance opportunities available for building upgrades and ways in which we can uh, look to do that better. We'll then have a few minutes of discussion with speakers. I've got a few prepared questions really just to tease out some of the things we've heard. But then importantly, we'll be turning to you, the audience and participants. Um, and I would welcome uh, questions in the chat box in Q&A uh, uh, format so that we can um, ask these of our speakers uh, and tease out some of their expertise. We'll be aiming to close just before two o'clock um, given a uh, smooth running. So um, again, thank you for being here. I think what I'll need to do is set the scene before I hand over. And probably the best way of doing this is to start at a global level. As I've said, um, today, September 29th, is UN International Day of Awareness on Food Loss and Waste Reduction. And as Susie was saying earlier, it's quite an acronym uh, to try and get your head around. Um, the goal there of, of today's uh, day of awareness is about working together towards enhancing the efficient use of natural resources. And that leads, of course, on to mitigating climate change and supporting food security and nutrition. And the box over on the right hand, of the right hand side of the screen you'll see is Sustainable Development Goal 12 or SDG 12, which focuses on responsible consumption and production. Now, as with all of the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals, there are you know, 10 to 12 targets that sit underneath that. And the first three targets under SDG 12 are about implementing a 10-year framework of programs uh, to support sustainable consumption and production um, all around uh, the world, and taking into account both the development and capabilities of developing countries. Then by 2030, achieving sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources, and underneath that, by 2030, so just eight years away, halving per capita global food waste at both retail and consumer levels and reducing food losses around production and supply chains. So there are some really high level global um, goals and targets about reducing food loss. And uh, what we want to do over the next hour is unpick, well, what does that mean at national level? at state level, and then, of course, at local level with individual businesses and people. So um, we are going to go to a poll. Um, we are going to do this a couple of times through this webinar because we like to encourage uh, interactive sessions. The poll question should be appearing on a pop up screen in front of you. We'd like you to indicate your answer to that question and uh, submit your answer and we'll share the results in a few moments.
Now, Ed, I can't see anything coming up on screen. Can you talk me through what's going on? Hello, Robin. Um, we've got 38 responses so far. Um, leading out front is residential with 43% as being the biggest priority, but closely behind and catching up very quickly is retail and hospitality with 40%. So they're pretty much completely blitzing commercial office space and hotel and accommodation and okay. manufacturing. Gotcha. Um, now, have you, let's close that off if we can and get to, to look at the final numbers. So final numbers, 44 responses um, and residential just pipped um, retail and hospitality, 43 to 38. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, that's really good to hear. And it gives us an idea of not just the people in the room, but also people's priorities. Thank you for everyone who's taken part. Um, now, one of the things we need to look at very quickly is why food loss is so important. And thanks to Lizette, we've got this wonderful series of graphics uh, which are popping up on the right hand side. But reducing food loss and waste is going to be essential when we look at how hunger has slowly been on the rise over the last eight years and how much of food uh, produced is lost around the world between harvest and retail. Out of that 17 percent of total global food production wasted, 11 percent is in households. 5% is in the food service and 2% is in retail. So this is an opportunity today to really call to action both the public and the private sector to prioritize actions around food, food loss and move ahead with innovation. And that's why I'm delighted to uh, hear from some of our speakers about the innovation, the technologies that are going on to improve things. It's also important to consider the impacts of these food losses, um, not just economic and environmental, but social. Um, we need to look at how we build more sustainable food systems and look at all the resources that go into producing this food and those like water, land, energy, labor and capital, because it's not just the food going to waste, it's all of those resources. And of course, uh, worldwide, the disposal of food, um, the you know sending to landfill, that in turn leads to significant greenhouse gas emissions, which contribute to ch climate change. And important to remember that we need to look at how food security changes from region to region and country to country, as well as food avail availability, and how that in turn contributes to the increasing costs of food, especially in developing countries. Um, quite simply put, we need to look at the resilience of our food systems and how sustainable they are. And that can be in terms of, you know, number of crops out of the same uh, amount of land or the amount of chemicals or fertilizers put onto the land. And we need to focus on the uh, adoption of those integrated approaches. So um, as you'll see in that second paragraph, we need to be encouraging technologies and innovative solutions and new ways of working, as well as what we know is essentially good practices to manage food quality, reduce food loss and waste. I'm very glad to note that there are extraordinary programs going on around Australia. This is a screenshot from the New South Wales EPA uh, Love Food Hate Waste program. There's a lot of information um, from you know, business focused to New South Wales households to partnerships. And then if we look at Victoria's plan to halve food waste, this is through Sustainability Victoria. Again, there's some great um, goals set, not just around production, because Victoria grows about 25% of all fresh food, but also about halving food waste from businesses, from households uh, and across the area. And lastly, of course, um, South Australian uh, Department, the Green Industries SA have their food waste strategy, uh, which is out there looking at, again, how they can um, avoid food waste, how they can um, grow and produce food better, but also so they, how can, they can uh, encourage more of a circular economy. And here in New South Wales, where I've lived the last 20 years, more than a third of the waste generated by households is sent to landfill. Um, so uh, $965 worth is the average amount that each person throws away each year. That's an extraordinary figure. That's from the, the 2021 Australian Household Food Waste Report. 
Now, whilst some food waste is unavoidable, some things can't be used, a lot of the food waste that we look at really is avoidable. And I'm delighted that we'll have Chris from the City of Sydney talking a little bit further about some of the things they're doing about avoidable food waste and their local businesses. Um, where I'll leave uh, this introduction is one of my favourite resources. Um, I've worked around the sustainability arena for many years is Project Drawdown. This is the world's leading resource for climate solutions, and their mission is to help the world reach drawdown. So the point when levels of greenhouse gases stop climbing and start to decline. They have a, a constantly evolving table of solutions uh, to help us avoid emitting heat trapping gases, and they rank those solutions according to gigatons of CO2 or the equivalent that can be reduced or sequestered uh, between 2020 and 2050. Now the top three solutions far, far above um, any building solutions like solar, wind or insulation are, well, number one is reducing food waste. There's 88 and a half gigatons of CO2 equivalent that could be reduced here through um, better uh, production, storage, distribution, and reduced waste. The second is around plant-rich diets, uh, when that, of course, looks at maintaining a, a proper nutritional re regime, meeting daily protein requirements, um, and decreasing meat consumption, and then purchasing locally produced food where possible. So I'm delighted Raquel is going to share some of the Nutri-V uh, journey. And then third is family planning and education. Again, 68.9 68, 68 gigatons of CO2 equivalent. And the relevance here is not just the quality education for all children and access to voluntary family planning, but it's about how those uh, solutions then benefit maternal and child health, nutrition, economic development, and resilience. And so all of these things are very much connected. There are some excellent resources available uh, to lead you on. We'll be circulating this information afterwards. Um, one of the ones I love is with the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. 15 quick tips for reducing food waste and becoming a food hero. And you can see how it ties to those three sustainable development goals. And similarly, there are global initiatives on food loss and waste reduction. This is um, a, an extraordinary collection of photographs uh, called Grown for a Bin. Uh, which look at some of the, um, you know, the foods that are produced and then wasted as a way of using really um, uh, memorable images that resonate.